take a second and have a look up at the ceiling in the room that you're in right now. And I might be off here, but I'm willing to bet that it's pretty boring. Flat, maybe with a light fixture. Maybe it has that very common popcorn texture. Well, the ceiling of my stairwell is very much like that. But minus the popcorn, it has a single bulb and a cheap fixture. And I want to do something about that. I want to dress it up. And this project didn't just pop into my head. I've been thinking about it for a few years. And over that time, I came up with a few ideas. But I settled on one that I like the best. And it's a sunburst with a rectangle in the middle that will cover the light fixture and then rays coming off of that with the light shining through the gaps in between. Even though this seems like a relatively simple project, I knew that I'd be running into problems if I didn't do enough planning beforehand. So I did spend a lot of time drawing this up and getting the size of all the parts correct and making sure that all the angles are correct. And then with that done, I could start cutting the parts out and the planning would reduce the chances of making a mistake. Or at least that was the idea. And part of the challenge was to try to get all of these parts from a single sheet. The ceiling is actually physically bigger than a full sheet of plywood, but there are spaces between the parts, a one inch gap, or at least that's what I planned for. And I figured the best way to cut these parts is to start by laying them out and then I'll cut them out fairly roughly with the jigsaw. And then what I can do is I can use straight edges stuck to the parts with double-sided tape and then use a router bit with a bearing on the end that will rub against that straight edge and cut a clean edge on the part. And then when I have that one made, because I need multiples of some of the parts, I can use that to mark out the new part and then use it as a guide for trimming the new part. I had all these laid out and numbered on my cut sheet, and so I was careful to mark the parts as I was making them. I started out by doing that on a piece of tape, but later I changed that to marking the number directly on the back. The double-sided tape worked well, and I used it because I didn't want to fire in any pins and then have pinholes to deal with, but I have problems with the tape releasing and screwing up my cut. So I switched to the pin nailer instead and did the rest of the parts with that. These pins are literally that. They're so small you can hardly see them. So the hole that they leave is barely visible and easily filled. I want to break in and give you a heads up to take advantage of the Maker's Mob lowest price drop ever. This Black Friday, Cyber Monday, for a limited time, the Maker's Mob presents the Authentic Craftsman series. In this limited run series, teachers like myself, Jimmy DeResta, John Peters, Neil Pask, the Samurai Carpenter, Liam Hoffman, and Frank Howarth will teach you the skills necessary to become a real craftsman. Through a curated list of woodworking projects and tutorials, there is no question this series will have you well on your way to becoming a well-rounded craftsman. So click the link in the description below to get access now and take advantage of our lowest price ever before it ends this Monday at midnight. And then after I had the parts cut out, I put a chamfering bit in my router cable and I chamfered the back edge. That's the side that faces up towards the ceiling. And even though this plywood is brand new and not in bad shape, I took the time to sand each piece with 220 grip paper just to make sure that there's no dirt on there. And then because the weather was still good, I took the parts outdoors and I sprayed on two coats of water-based polyurethane. And with all the parts finished, I could start installing them, but I discovered a mistake that I made and that was messing up the orientation of the parts. Long story short, I had to remake half of the 28 pieces. So getting it from a single sheet of plywood was out of the question. Luckily, because I know myself, I know the mistakes that I make, I bought two when I bought the first one. And when I bought that plywood, I bought enough lumber to build a scaffold in my stairwell to work off of. And here I should point out that I'm an experienced carpenter. I built scaffolds like this before. I know how strong they need to be. 
But if you do this yourself, you want to make sure that it's good and strong before you put your full weight on. Maybe you could ask your neighbor to come over, especially if he's a little bit overweight, and check out what you're doing. And get him to walk out on it first, just to make sure it doesn't collapse. So with the platform built, I could start with the light fixture. The new one is going to be two 48 inch LED bulbs that will be facing in opposite directions towards the side walls. And I figure they'll throw the light uh, sideways and that'll give me the effect of the sunburst. And because there's going to be spaces between the parts, I'm going to paint everything that I think will be visible as I'm putting it up. Another thing I did before I got started was make these cardboard templates to locate the blocks that the pedals or the rays will get mounted on. So I figured I would, you know, make those, get them put up on the ceiling, and I thought tape would do it, but the tape kept releasing, so I switched to push pins instead. And then there's a rectangular cutout that the mounting blocks can go into and that way they get lined up properly and then i can also use these cardboard templates on the rays as i'm mounting those i'll know where to drive the pins after i got the mounting blocks put up and let the glue dry i took the time to paint those as well and now i can start in the middle with that rectangular piece that's supposed to cover the light fixture now this piece needs to be removable so there will be screws in this and hold it up while I get the screws in. I cut a stick to the right length and the finish on the plywood is a little bit slippery so I put some masking tape on to help with that. With that done I could start putting on the pedals and this is a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. I thought I could put the cardboard right on the piece and use the stick to hold it up in place but that wasn't working so well. So what I did instead was I took two little dots of masking tape and I marked where I should dry the pins and then took those off after I got it fastened in place. And even though there's a full sheet of plywood up on this ceiling, each of these pedals don't weigh very much so I'm not concerned at all about them coming down. One problem I noticed while I was doing this is how much of the ceiling I could see through the spaces between the pedals. Mainly I could see a little bit too much of the light fixture. And even though you can only see that from the top of the stairs, it was bothering me, so I decided to make a change. I had already wasted half a sheet of plywood. Might as well go a little bit further and fix something that I knew was going to continue to bother me. So I came up with the idea of changing that center panel from a panel into kind of a tray and making it bigger. Of course, to do that, I would have to make the pedals shorter. So I'd set up to do that with my battery powered trim router with a 1 8 inch bit and use a guide that was clamped to the rectangular panel in the middle and then just cut off the ends of each pedal in several passes while getting covered with sawdust. And then after I had that done, I could measure how big the new panel would be. And like I said, I'm making this like a tray with two inch sides that go up. And I wanted to make this so that you can't see any edges of the plywood and I also didn't want to like edge band the panel and then add the sides on top of that which would probably look okay but I'm pretty good at cutting long miters and getting that to work so I decided to do that instead. I tilted the blade on my saw to 45 degrees and I'm using my precision miter sled to cut the ends first. The other cuts can be made just by using the regular fence on the saw. And of course I'll do a little bit of a dry fit to make sure everything goes together well and then I'll flip everything over and put masking tape on the seam so that when it folds up again the masking tape holds that corner tight together. And I'm using real masking tape which is a stronger glue than the green or blue painters tape. So it's not going to release as easy and screw up your glue up. And then people ask me why I use you know, a construction adhesive in some places 
and regular glue in others. Well, here I'm using regular glue because I want this to dry quickly. At this point, I spent days working on this deceptively simple project and I just wanted to get it done. So I got it glued up and I let it dry for about three hours and then I took it in and I put it up on the ceiling in place of the narrow panel and I didn't exactly like the way it looked. It was blocking too much of the light and it was a little bit too plain. So I decided to bring it back out to the workshop and very carefully lay out rectangular slots that I cut once again with the trim router with that 1 8 inch bit and those rectangular slots are positioned directly below the light tubes in the fixture so they let the light come straight down and then the sides of the tray hide the fixture from the side so you can't see it from the top of the stairs and I have to say that that made all the difference so the improvement was well worth the time and the extra plywood it took to do.